Hello and uh, welcome to another repaint video. This time I'm making a Harry Potter custom for Hellcrafts in our awesomely cool collaboration. I wished for a pastel creation and he likes Harry Potter, so I decided to create a Death Eater. I tried sticking to the books and movies as much as possible and I hope he liked it. So I'm customizing another Deuce Gorgon. I don't think I have any other male dolls in my stock box at the moment anyway. It all started with another broken neck peg. I freaked out, but then realized that I didn't need those flaps anyway. The head stays on well even without them. They're just there for the extra super secure attachment. Taking the green stuff off the head is a hassle. This is my first time doing it since this is recorded in December and I've learned a lot since then. Don't use fingers, use pliers. To get the flaps out of the head, I made an incision. This is how they look. I usually cut off those on the female ones, so no worries. As usual, I clean the face with pure acetone. I always like doing this, it's like creating a blank canvas to paint on. Now I'm going to spray it with MSC and prepare the body. On a scale of 1 to 10, this is a 10 in awkwardness, but you know, sometimes the bodies have seams that I want to get rid of, so it has to be done. I also sand off the tattoo on his shoulder. Time for the face up! I start with a dark brown pencil to create the outline. I mixed blue, red and yellow to get the right colors on this face up's pastels. It was interesting going back and forward to create a natural shade and it was super educational. Next layer, here I went in with some black pastels, if I remember it correctly, I saw a BGD face-up video, video <laughs> I can't pronounce it, video once, where the artist said to concentrate the shadows on the inner corner of the eyes to create a more masculine style, and you know, that kind of stuck with me. This is one thing I've changed since I made this face up. I don't use black to shade inside the eyes anymore, instead I use dark blue. Third layer, more colors. Yes, I didn't forget to add veins. I'm so glad to see this. The final layer and here I go in with the heavy artillery, the army painter acrylics.
Yeah, let's shove some acrylics up his nose too. And with that, he is finished. I am pretty pleased. He needs hair though. Again, I didn't record that whole process. Like, why? It makes no sense. At this point, I kind of felt like the sorting hat, sorting the strands into twos and thirds. I used different shades of brown to create it, but if you want to see how I make wefts from the acrylic yarn, you should look at my more recent videos. Then I just glued it onto the head. He needed some severe hairstyling though. And since I was so pleased with the face-up, he needed a Death Eater mask to hide behind. I mixed a two-part epoxy clay and smooshed it onto the another Deuce Gorgon head. Cling foil was not a good idea, it's better to paint the face with glue and let it dry, that way it won't move around and it's easy to detach after curing. I thought of making a smooth mask like the ones in the movies, but decided on an original character who was one of the first Death Eaters. The mask is pretty rough and ragged. After letting it cure for 24 hours, I continued the sculpting with new clay. Then, after curing another 24 hours, I could sand the rough edges and make the final preparations before airbrushing the mask. This is freaky. <laughs> As usual, I use Schminke's paints with my airbrush. This time I was spraying a base coat of deep black. I was careful not to spray too much at once. After the base coat, I dry brushed the mask with plate male metal. Looks pretty cool, I love the effect. Next, we needed a dark mark on his arm, the one that all Death Eaters have. Speaking of tattoos, I've booked the first appointment for my dragon tattoo. I am so stoked. I love the whole process of getting one, you know, the planning, the booking, the actually making it. And uh, yeah, this one will need four sittings, so... Somehow this looks cute. Oh well. Next I blushed the hands and gave them some manicures. I gave the hands some wrinkles with acrylics, since the hands are the only body parts that will be showing, I focused a lot on making them as realistic as possible. And honestly, it paid off. Definitely. I didn't have any good patterns, so I made one myself. First I covered the torso in cling foil, then I tape half of it with masking tape. Then I trace the seams before detaching and cutting them.
Finally, I trace the pattern on another paper. After tracing on fabric, I cut it on fold on the chest, then I hem the neckline with some fabric glue. Then I hem the end of the arms the same way. To create the silver pattern on the shirt, I spray painted with the same silver paint that I used on the mask. To create some base pattern, I used a piece of tulle. It worked pretty well. Now it needed some more details though, for that I used a swirly clear stamp and more silver paint. Well, that worked nicely. I did the same thing to the upper parts of the arm, then I attached them to the bodies by hand. I don't know why I didn't record this process, instead I went on to the cape, but yeah. You get the idea, attach the arms and sew the sides. For the cape I used an elastic fabric that was pretty thin, it was important for the cloak to fold neatly. Here it's halfway finished, I just added the hood. That pattern I took from DG Requiem Design, this is the result. As a final touch, I made a stitch on each side to get the fall on the fabric. I am basically helping gravity. <laughs> For the pants, I used the DG Requiem's school uniform pattern. This fabric frayed a bit, so I sewed a zigzag along the edges. I love this fabric though, because it's so shiny. Let's make some shoes. Same principle as with the shirt pattern. For this I used fall leather. It was a bit stretchy, which was fine. I cut out the parts and then sew the shoes back, making another seam for detail. Then I hemmed the rest except the bottom part. After adding eyelets, I glued them directly to his original shoes. I've never sculpted shoes before, which will need to change for my Alice doll. Then I used some foam to heighten the sole. Finally, I added some more fall leather to hide the sole before I painted it black. I forgot to show that I erased the green skull dragon with acetone, but yeah, I did do that. Then I got some details like wrist armor and a belt. And of course he needed a wand. I mean, a death eater without a wand is just a rude person who knows some magic tricks. I used a toothpick and attached it to my dremel so I could create a shape. This was so incredibly fun. I 
I glued a bead at the end, partially to give it some weight. I wanted to be able to balance the wand in his hand. And then I added some bling to it. After creating some kind of silhouette, I painted it black. Then I added some gold paint to it to give it a rustic look and accent the details. Finally, I glossed it with Tamiya gloss varnish. This doesn't look half bad, honestly. For the Certificate of Authenticity, I used a printed Hogwarts acceptance letter. Cheesy, maybe, but it looked pretty cool, so I don't regret it. That insignia, though, that's like pure art, and gosh, do I miss my matte black nails. So yeah, I made a little Death Eater. I'm a 90s kid, so of course I read the Harry Potter books. Nowadays, as an adult, I guess I identify myself more with the Death Eaters. I took the sorting test again though, and I still belong to Ravenclaw. So this was really fun to create. I really hope Hallycraft's like him. I sure do love the pasta Lolita he made for me. It's so cute, and the details are just so pretty, so yeah. I'm taking this opportunity to thank my Patreons, this means that next week I'll publish a Harry Potter inspired familiar. I hope you people will like it, I've based the design on one of my favorite magical creatures, so I had loads of fun making that too. Make sure to head over to Hallocraft's video of my pasta Lolita, he always makes such cute characters and I love watching his videos. So I started out with this Deuce Gorgon guy and I ended up with this fellow. He's so cool, he looks so evil but handsome at the same time. I'm so happy about the outfit, it took ages and some rage quits, but it was so worth it. I hope you enjoyed watching the process of my little Death Eater and... Well, yeah. Until next time. Bye!